Welcome to the Sports Hangover. I'm Michael Benatar, joined alongside J Dog. Mike, it's good to see you. It is July 1st. A lot of people are taking this week off. Uh, not over, right? No, we're here. Uh, I don't like skipping holidays. I feel like it's a day where we're free <laughs> and we're able to do work when no one else is working. So Mike we're here. Mike loves to record on holidays. It's I like do. in corporate America, you get so few like weekdays off. And Mike <laughs> loves, oh, you have a Monday off? Get on that pod, 9 a.m. Let's do it. <laughs> well, yeah, you could do it at earlier time. You wake up. But Jeremy doesn't like waking up until like 11 o'clock on days That's off. That's not so. true. On the West Coast, I wake up at 11 Eastern now on the weekends. 8 a.m. <laughs> Pacific, Mike, I'm up. My body right. clock didn't change. All right, good. Uh, and by the way, speaking of July 4th, just want to mention like our founding yeah. fathers they must have been so proud of the debate the other night just of really proud of the direction the country's going in all optimism all good vibes right do you do you want me to give you a blind item and then maybe we can go into a little bit we don't have to recap we're not a political podcast here but we do gamble so i will give you some odds on the debate okay good spin on it good spin we'll stay out of politics and only we do will. gambling lines yeah uh so here is the blind item this a lister is trying to clear his schedule for the next two weeks apparently he thinks it's go time and that is gavin newsom this gavin. man <laughs> this man is geared up to become the next Democratic uh, nominee, and he is ready. He's all over the news. You could not see him on the uh, night of the debate. And everybody thinks Joe is out and Gavin or somebody else might be in. So I do have odds. You want me to go through some other odds or do you have some yeah, people you want to Yeah, and this is our governor. Up? We know Gavin really well. All of us in California, we have a lot of problems out here in our state. We don't yeah. need to get into all of those. But I, what I will mention is every time Gavin does a national act or an international act, like he was playing basketball with kids in China. He went to Israel to, to see what happened there. He's acting like the president and waiting, but yeah. he's only the California governor. And so every time yes. he goes, I'm like, are you running for president? Are you not? And so this would make more sense for all of his uh, last few years, you could say, for not yeah. helping California and focusing on the country. Yeah, he's more focused on his political career and not California making it better. Here he's like, let's make the world better and try to and get him opinion. nominated. I don't disagree. That is my opinion. Uh, so I have nominees here for the next president. Uh, obviously, Trump right now is favored. He's minus 183. We have Joe Biden at plus thirty three. So if you think Joe is still going to be there, and you love plus what happened, okay, yeah, if you, if you love what happened on the debate night, Joe would be your guy at plus three, uh, like three to one odds for Joe if you actually think he's going to win. Pretty solid odds. Which it, it's actually a one to one race right now, so his odds shouldn't be that poor when it's <laughs> only two people who can actually win. <laughs> yes. Sure, no yeah. one, no one should be plus one thirty in like a fair matchup. Yes. Yeah, so that's what's happening right now, and then we have. We have a few nominees, so I'm gonna I'm gonna list a few. So we have Gavin Newsom at plus yeah, he's eight to one plus seven ninety, so eight to one odds on Gavin Newsom. We have not, almost ten to one odds on Michelle Obama, which is a a dark horse there because I don't think a lot of people even think she's gonna do it. But I think a lot of like rumblings of like they hope she does it. They hope she does it. And mutual yes. friend has put all of his eggs in the Michelle Obama basket. I got to yeah. tell you, Michelle wants any part of the White House. She so. did eight years. Uh, she raised her daughters there. They're so rich. The Obamas are so rich. Why wade back into this cesspool now? Well, like Donald Trump said during the uh, debate, he came back just to make this country better. He hated what was going on. That's and clearly the reason. Kamala Harris, 16 to 1 odds. Not looking good for her. She was... Nowhere to be seen on debate night, really, what I saw it was all Gavin Newsom. It was almost like he was replaced as the vice president. Uh, so he, she's there at 16 to 1. Mike, if we're looking for good odds here, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm going to sure. put the, the good odds on Kamala. Because the system is set up, it's going to be very hard, unless someone can talk um, some wisdom into Joe Biden, if he doesn't make the decision himself, it's really him or Kamala. There's no sure. putting in a third Gavin, a third, you know, insert celebrity here, The Rock, Oprah, Matthew McConaughey. They're not walking through that door no, unless no. Biden says, uh, I'm not running. And if he does say that, I want all those people to walk through the door. I want the craziest, most wild, unpredictable, like, scene ever. But until he says, I'm, I'm running, it's going to be him. Or if he has any issues, it's Kamala. So I'm actually putting my money on Kamala oh, because the way the system is set up, not necessarily because. I think she will win or anything like that. Now, do you think that, like, if you predict it well, do you think, like, what if something happens to Joe, he gets nominated but can't actually – seal the deal in january not able to be there not there maybe and kamala becomes president not I think there. That would count. like he wasn't there the other <laughs> night so he <laughs> might not be there on inauguration day even if he's standing there yeah that's true uh a few other people we have hillary clinton at uh i think Bad. like 
What right. is it? Fifty to one. We well, have don't uh, make people Kennedy no. at six to one. This guy, uh, yeah, why is yeah, he yeah. only six to one? Why is he not breaking through? If everyone is anti-Trump, anti-Biden, do you have a visitor? Do you need to take? Uh, no, take no, no. It's good. It's good. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, why is RFK not at better odds here? This is someone you support. If everyone is anti-Trump and anti-Biden, why isn't he doing better in this situation? Well, because he got kind of kicked out, right? Like he wasn't able to be the Democratic uh, nominee and he decided to go independent. Now, I think... Well, he's not very Democratic with his vaccine stances plus others. Yeah, but I feel like he was trying to run in Democratic, then he went independent. So who knows what could happen? I mean, he. I, the problem is his voice. And listen, I, I really wanted to vote for him. And now it just seems like... The only person that's going to win is Donald Trump unless, like, somebody comes in here. Like, if Michelle Obama came in, Michelle's winning for sure. Like, everybody yeah. loves Michelle. Um, but, yeah, RFK. People he's don't a- want, for, for the most part, I think. And, of course, uh, Trump has big fans. Biden has big fans. For the most part, people don't want either one. It's a repeat yeah. of an era where we're looking to move forward and not backwards, and these two men are so old. So any strong candidate— of any value to come into the race that's not named Trump or Biden should do really, really well. And that's why, like, there's no excitement around Kamala. There's no excitement around RFK. Who is that person to come in and win it? Like you said, if Michelle's unlikely, I don't know. I don't know if Gavin will, will be popular enough to beat Trump in a general election. I don't now, know. Now, we still don't know who the vice president is for Donald Trump. Now, it, I, I have a feeling it needs to be somebody like RFK, like bring him in. And then you kind of get both parties, right? You're kind but then of like, he's adding what one percent? Is that what RFK is pulling at right I now? I don't know. I, I think it's just because they're not giving him like the he, he's not allowed on CNN. He's not allowed on these debates. The system's not made for three candidates. It's made for two. So. It should be made for all the candidates. It should it be should. open. It should be very open. I think we learned that Thursday night yet again. Um, but yeah, the debate was what it was wild to watch. The memes after were great. A lot of great memes after. So I'm gonna put some money on a few people. Sprinkle a few dollars here and there. Uh, maybe hedge my bet, place it on, on Donald. He might win it all. Um, but yeah, it was kind of, it was, it moved the markets so much. I should have bet before the debate. That's my <laughs> it moved the markets. I've never it spent so much it. time on the predict it website than, uh, than during the debate in real time. It's like, it's exactly like the game charts where you like see the win probability as you're watching a game. And it's like, oh, it's always amazing when a team goes from 95% to, to losing the game. And yeah. that's kind of what we saw with Gavin in real time, making up ground and, and maybe Biden had a better, uh, scripted press conference the day after, so maybe his energy's back. Uh, I read this weekend he only works between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., or that's when he's actually cognitive. So that's, that's Joe? A, a reason maybe, yeah, Joe, just six hours a day um, <laughs> might be the time to get him. Debate him at 3 p.m., and he's going to light you up. I don't did, know. You see that, uh, did you see that tweet by Bill Ackman saying, like, I swear Joe has not blinked his eyes the entire time? And then a doctor like chimed in. It's like, yeah, it's definitely some sort of like a drug that's keeping them. Like, I saw you said that. In. I do have a problem with diagnosing uh, medical conditions on Twitter in general. Um, Twitter's <laughs> Twitter's a very negative place, and the it idea is. that we're making assumptions off of uh, Twitter responses uh, is dangerous. But Twitter was a great place again during the debate. Um, if the founding fathers had a had a Twitter accounts, I would have loved to see the Thomas Jefferson, the Ben Franklins great. of it all. What what were they saying about the other night? Um, all right. Well, that's enough of politics. We'll probably get Mike, back. I say you after that. I just made a joke about July 4th and you always have like real content behind it. You did this to me recently, a few weeks ago on something uncomfortable and we just had to talk about it. Oh yeah. We just got to talk about it. I mean, everybody's talking about it. Might, might as well make some money off of it. Right. Uh, we are not political analysts. Don't take our word for it. We're just sports people. Um, talking about gambling. We, we are going to be doing the contest this year, the sports hangover contest, the pick them contest. And I'm going to open it up. To the fans, I'm going to put a link in the bio once it's ready to go. We're going to launch it mid-July. Jeremy, for for you, I got you something special. I'll I'll probably wait until next week to give it to you, but I made us custom sport hangover jerseys, but they're they're the you got the Miami Dolphins, I got the Seahawks. It says the sports hangover on the back, just for images of when we enter the contest. I'm going into Vegas this year to enter the contest. You won't be there, but you'll be there in spirit with uh, our sports hangover jerseys. I got also one for our mutual friend as well, so we can and go some there. Some bumblebee and colors for him. Some bumblebee colors. <laughs> nice. uh, you know, I got a really good connect out in China. They get me some. Good jerseys. Yeah, just a little cheaper than the NFL sanctioned jerseys, from what I understand. That's exciting, Mike. I'm I'm excited to see the colors and excited to see the sports singer. We've been we've been podcasting for 15 years. It's no surprise yeah. we'd be on the front of a jersey by now. Eventually, at some yeah. point we want to be on one of those NBA patches, right? That's that's one of our yeah, uh, yeah, attempts yeah. too to be a sponsored. I think we're going to start with low division three and work our way. We up. we might be able to afford the night, uh, not the Nike, the NHL ones first. Exactly. I, start, I see now on the jerseys they're actually putting like logos are those actually and stuff. cheap on the NHL, or like 300 bucks to sponsor for the night. <sighs> 
Jeremy Fanatics took over the jerseys this year, and I'm not looking forward to what these jerseys are going to be like. Like, Fanatics is making them. Not Nike. It's Fanatics making their jerseys. It is not going to be good. So we'll see what happens when those jerseys actually release. Speaking of not good, Florida Panthers winning the cup. Not exciting, right? Not good. Like, Florida teams shouldn't win hockey championships. I thought it was good. It was good for Florida. I was excited. Uh, I know Canada wanted it more, but I think it was good. I think it was good for them. Mike, I, 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 you're so wrong about that. I was watching game game seven, and it was supposed to be this yeah. electric atmosphere. And all I could think of the whole time was like, if this game was in Boston or New York or Chicago or L.A., the fans wouldn't sit down for the whole game because it's game seven. And there's like five minutes left with the Panthers about to win the cup, and the the place is sitting down. It's like you could barely hear a murmur. I wanted to hear less Sean McDonough, more of the fans, yet all I heard was him even as the game was ending. The, the crowd yeah. was not okay. The How was, uh, parade in the rain, maybe that was okay. I don't did know. Did Sean McDonough? Was low turnout. Did he get excited at all? Because I know he's just monotone the entire time. No, There's he's no always excitement monotone. out of that man's he's voice. He's not our favorite. No. He gets good assignments, and he, we just don't like him that much. I know. I don't know how he gets all these good jobs. He's, I guess he's just solid. He's a enough. famous sportscaster. That must be it. That, all right. What else do you want to talk about? No, what serious. else you got? It's true. It's true. Nepotism. Nepo baby. Speaking of Nepo he... babies, what a trans. Wow. To dude. Bronny James. That just came naturally, folks. Uh, the Lakers went full Nepo, and as I told Mike last week, this is a classic Hollywood move. Once you get one family to make you a dollar, you just pump that family in the rest of the way and keep pumping your dollars from that one family name. And and Bronny James is exactly that. The Lakers have no reason to believe he will be successful, no reason to believe they will help his team in 2024 wow. or beyond, no reason to think that Bronny James could be the difference in them going from the 10th seed in the NBA West to a little bit better seed, maybe hosting a playoff game. That would be crazy, I know, but it'd be nice if they did. Bronny James won't help with any of that, but what he will help with is nepotism of keeping LeBron happy as he enters this free agency. Uh, NBA moves are happening. LeBron hasn't opted in. He hasn't signed. I know. We know Bronny, his his son is on the team, and we know his best friend is now the head coach. So that's what we know about the Lakers. Do you? So this is the first uh, father son duo to play together ever in the NBA. Big deal. LeBron opted out of his contract to hopefully attract some big talent. Clay is no longer an option. Clay Thompson is now a maverick, I think. The Lakers lost out on him. They were trying yeah. to acquire him this morning. They offered him $20 million and it wasn't enough. Since when are the Lakers a team that can't afford to bring in the best free agents? So Clay's not there. Paul George <laughs> left the Clippers. Uh, Philadelphia. So the Cl- You'd rather live in Philadelphia yeah. than right here in LA yeah. where we are. I mean, that's how you know your franchise is bad. Lakers. So, I don't know what is going on, but it doesn't seem like anybody wants to play with the Lakers. LeBron opted out. Now he's probably going to get the max deal for three years and be a player for three more three years. years. He's got three more years? I think if he signs the max, he has to be there for three years, maybe with a year option at the end. Wait, has he not made enough money already, Mike? He's going to sign the max and hamper the Lakers' offseason moves even more? Why can't he sign for $2 and devote that money elsewhere? I know they just got to get players. And then also I saw online, uh, I don't know, what's what's, uh, LeBron's younger son's name? Bryce, I think. Bryce... uh... Right, There's I think another one coming. Yeah, he he will be able to be on the Lakers in years, but they'll be uh, too old by then. He'll be like forty two years old. So I don't think really? that's gonna happen. LeBron's in charge. If LeBron says I want to come yeah. out as a forty two year old and be the slowest guy on the court and make one layup a game, the Lakers will let him do it. Clearly, the Lakers will let him do whatever he wants and add yeah. anyone he wants. If LeBron's wife wants to be on the team, the Lakers will accommodate oh, yeah. a female in the NBA to allow it to happen. If Rich Paul, they will accommodate a 60-year-old man on the court if the Lakers, if if LeBron wants that. Yeah. That's what we're doing. If LeBron wants it, the Lakers will do it. Nothing so far has helped them. They have not added a player worth a day in this offseason. Mike, it makes me mad because we're out here in I LA know. and the Lakers deserve to be great. And and we went to a game. And we were like, I love the prestige of the Lakers. You want you watch the show? I think the the Winning Time show. Yeah, that was a great it's show, like, by the way. It's People like hated that's it. who the Lakers should be. They should have I all know. that drama and storylines. And instead, they're a circus. Let's do a circus show about the Lakers. Um, how about this, Jeremy? There is a a bet out there right now that we can bet on Bronny. The odds for Bronny to score twenty five points in any regular season game. <laughs> is 30 to one odds for him to score 25 points in any game. I think that is a steal. I would bet it right now. He's got, listen, maybe in a blowout game, he's out there, he's shooting, scoring some points. He's definitely coming off the bench. If he's playing, I would bet this 30 to one odds lay a hundred dollars on it. Sounds pretty good to me. Mike, 
I'm on the other side of that bet. If you I, told me that that was Bronny James will score 25 points in his first season with the Lakers, I'm going under on the total. He's not going to play. If he plays at all, it's because it's late in the games when LeBron is already resting and Bronny comes in. I don't think they'll be on the court at the same time unless it's another gimmick that the Lakers cook up for us. He's that bad of a player. I don't think people understand how bad of a player he is and how he didn't deserve to be drafted at all. And the Lakers gave away a draft resource to take him last week in this draft. It just makes me mad. Again, they've added no one to help them this offseason. Other teams, the Mavs were just in the NBA Finals, Mike, and they're the ones to add Clay Thompson. The Mavs got infinitely better. The Lakers haven't added anyone other than J.J. Redick, who can't shoot threes legally because he's the coach. Yeah, legally he can't. He'd be better. He'd literally be a better player on the Lakers <laughs> as a player off the bench shooting threes than coaching them. And, like, it's just amazing that we're all allowing this. Like, are Lakers fans not upset about this, or are they allowing it too? I don't know. I don't know. what I got to talk to some Lakers fans. I feel like yeah. I don't know any like passionate yeah. Lakers fans. So we got to ask some Lakers fans what's either. going on. We went Maybe to, do a man uh, on the street. to Israel with one. Remember that years ago? Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Uh, Barack. Yeah. We went Barack. to, uh, yeah. 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 He went on to great things after that. I don't know what he's doing. We got to, we got to hit him up. He should come yeah. back on the pod. Cause he was on the yeah. pod a few times. He was our like Lakers expert in the early years. I need to know what Lakers fans are thinking. Cause I want to be a Lakers fan and I'm hating everything. I'm just going to be a Clippers fan into it. Dome Sad. only this year. Yeah. Inglewood. Um, Kawhi's back. Let me watch the Clippers. Um, real quick. Uh, 4th of July is this Thursday, which is a random day, but usually we have the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Joey Chestnut this year is ineligible to play because I think he ate, a vegan hot dog at some point and now is no longer at some point in his life right like no competition or anything i have no idea when he just like ate a vegan hot dog and now he's not allowed to enter this contest so joey is going out and he's going to compete against soldiers it likes eat and soldiers he has five minutes to eat as many hot dogs as possible i don't know where this is airing i don't i don't know where this is going to be seen but they have five minutes instead of 10 minutes and he has a comment here. He says, if anybody breaks 10, they did a good job in five minutes. I feel like I could down more than 10 hot dogs in five minutes. That's two a minute for five straight minutes. Are yeah. you downing one hot dog every 30 seconds, 10 times over? I think you can get one in 30 seconds, two in 60 seconds, but can you get to 10? I don't know. Cause you also have to do the bun and you're dipping it in the water. So you just swallow everything really easily. <laughs> well, there's no condiments on it. No ketchup or anything like that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I want to see what these guys do because I feel like in your mind, you think he can do better, but this guy can do what? Like he did 60 or something in 10 minutes. Yeah. Like yeah. that's insane. It, it's really bad for America. Another knock against our country <laughs> that he's not competing on ESPN. Like always on July 4th, it's really a poor day of sports and we always look forward to this and he won't be there. I think he's going up against Kobayashi on Netflix, like in the yeah. future, right? Like in September, I think it's like maybe. labor day, like September 2nd, he's going to be yeah. doing a one-on-one which is all even better. Legends, like Mike Tyson, Joey Chestnut, they're all going to Netflix now. I know. Well, hey, Nathan just booted them out. It's like they don't want to be seen in. No one's going to watch it. The, the the reigning champ isn't there. They kicked him out. Because he ate one vegan dog one time. It's That's like if they knew what I'm eating on the weekends, they wouldn't let me in either. <laughs> Uh, Mike, um, I, I want to pick up on that yeah. idea of July 4th. Like, why isn't it a better day for sports? Why isn't, again, why isn't MLB the sport of the summer, America's pastime, the perfect day yeah. to have a massive day on July 4th? Why isn't the All-Star Game and the Home Run Derby on Monday? This Thursday, we all have off of work. There's no sports on TV of note. There's Wimbledon. It's not even in America. Uh, no sports of note. And then fireworks at night. I don't need to see people's Instagram stories of fireworks. No. I'm not going to be on my phone watching that. I want to watch sports, and there's nothing on Thursday. Nothing. I feel like America does a bad job with that. It's kind of like a, a reset. It's like after this, then we start getting sports again. We start talking fantasy and football, a lot of drama in our fantasy leagues that we talked about before this, which is yeah. maybe we can talk about on the podcast at some point. Some people coming all in, some people coming out. We should break it down when it's a little more formal. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're, we're just um, hearing, hearing sources right now. I do have another blind item if you want to. I went through the blind item. There was only two today. So if you want to hear okay. another blind item about football. These are very verified, right? 100 percent verified these are user submitted stories from maybe friends of friends or people in the inner circles just submitting anonymously things that are happening around and this one is about uh nfl star um so here this is how the blind item starts this long time nfl not uh nfl qb not named aaron Rodgers, thinks he's underpaid he isn't he knows if he gets hurt, he will get zero dollars. He wants to get paid the full amount of salary, even if he gets injured, which is pretty likely. Do, can you guess which quarterback? That's my is? quarterback. I know that's my quarterback. You are wrong. It is not Tua. 
It is not? Matthew Stafford who is the one going to be. Yeah, he's the guy that was on that blind item. Well, he's been in some hot water lately. His wife, Kelly Stafford, did you see yeah. this scandal? She went on a podcast and said that she would hook up with Matt Stafford's backup quarterback in college to get his attention. Yes, I and saw she that. put this on a podcast, and the guy yeah. was like, "I'm right here." <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, right here listening to you talk about how you used me in college for sex. Like, what a weird story for for her to share. Super that weird because since there's not much going on, it's like such a big story too. It's like that was years ago. Like, I don't know how long ago he's in college. Exactly. But. Now they're married with five kids or whatever. Um, Matthew Stafford should not get a long term deal. Why should he get paid like other quarterbacks when he's on his last leg? He's like our age or older. He might be 36 or 37. I don't know how old he is, but yeah, he should not. He should no longer like. In my mind, he should have been retired already. Like when he yeah. moved to the Rams, won the Super Bowl, yeah. that, that should have been it. It's just like retire at the top. But well, he's, not he has, gonna... he's got the five kids. And Philip Rivers taught us you'll play as long as you can when the house is full of commotion. That's true. Yeah. So Matthew Stafford wants to get paid from the blind item. He knows he's going to get injured. I would pay him, honestly. I'd give him like a one year deal, one year max, but not like a three years or more. Who's their backup? Do they have a good backup? Didn't they draft that old guy out of college? It's Remember not that back old guy? quarterback season. I don't know. They did. Um, they the, did. The old from guy. He's, been, he's also almost from as... Georgia. Stetson Bennett. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> he's like just as old as uh, Matthew. But Apparently he's been he in, took uh, last year. They drafted him two years ago. And last year he was off all year for mental health. And I kind of applaud him for coming out and saying, I was struggling with my mental health. Now I'm back and ready to go. Like, okay. I don't hear that much. So he's back. All right, good. You got anything else? I have like one Scandal City and I guess that tweet, but that's it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of blind items, I don't know. Is, is Kyle Filipowski your Scandal City? Did that make we can We can talk about it. You, you sent me the I info. I did ask you to add it to the yeah. rundown. It was, pretty, it was pretty big last week. I feel like it's kind of died down ever since the draft. But yeah, why don't you well, explain let's bring to it people? Back. Let's bring it back. Yeah. Because this is a scandal. This is considered Scandal City. This is a Duke star basketball player. Um, this is not J.J. Reddick calling someone the N-word. That's like a different story that came yeah. out last week. Uh, totally different Duke superstar. This is Kyle Filipowski. Uh, Duke stars are having problems these days. Kyle Filipowski, a great scorer. He's seven feet tall for Duke. Big name in college. The draft happened last week. I think we discussed him, Mike. Very few names we know. A lot of the guys are from Europe and France. Not a good Didn't draft. even know this guy's name. This guy's one of the most famous players in the actual draft. Um, if you watch college basketball in the tournament, you know this guy. Um, he did not get drafted in the first round. People are like, what's going on? Why is he falling? Well, apparently he has a whole backstory where he's been groomed by his babysitter when he was growing Crazy. up. She is now seven or eight years older than him. She's like 28. He's like 22 or 23 or something like that. Um, they started dating when she was in high school, or when he was in high school, under 18. Mm -hmm. She was in college, which college students shouldn't be dating high what, schoolers. Isn't she, she's what, 28 now and he's 21 or something? Or something is it a bigger like age yeah. gap? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something like that. So, so he was in high school. She knew he'd be a great star. He's obviously very tall, very skilled. He was a high school star, all of that. So the story goes that Kyle Filipowski's family went on social media, mother and brother, I think it was, and started outing this whole thing on how he won't talk to them anymore. And he is now married or engaged to her. Yeah. Again, even though she was the babysitter and they started like doing things underage. And my, my takeaway, and I'm curious what you think of this and if you yeah. go the same direction, is if the roles were reversed, if this was a man babysitter who groomed a woman uh, before she went to be a star in the WNBA and then married her to take advantage of her in the WNBA, this would be the biggest story ever. This would be people coming out against it. This is wrong, yep. as it should be in that situation. Why does no one care that a man was put in the situation? Can't men be sexually harassed? Can't men, of course, be... Um, be done to things illegally when they're juniors, of course, yet no one seems to care. Where is the backlash for this story? So I think the, the story lies deeper because I think it became like a religious thing, right? I think the Mormons kind of took him in and she he became like part of this Mormon group, right? Like she's Mormon and then kind of sucked him in. It's like, don't talk to your family. Don't talk to your brother. And it's weird. And it is weird. I mean, the story is even weirder that she was actually his babysitter. And then like, Oh, well, he's going to be a star. I should just start like grooming him to be uh, my, my future husband, which yeah. is super weird. But yeah, I think that like the religious part of it and almost like brain, you were brainwashed. And so it's like, you think this is totally fine. You're going through it. And then it's like one day you're going to wake up and be like, what the hell was I doing? It's like you were in a cult. 
like I'm not saying Mormons are cults, but it's like uh, it is a religion that is widely taking over. And they say by like 20, like 50, almost the entire West Coast might be Mormon, which is a wild that. stat. They're you can look it up that, online. That Mormonism is moving very quickly as a religion taking over. Um, I don't know why, but I just saw a stat when I went to Utah. I was like looking up stats like what's going on with Mormons? Like, why can't they drink? Why can't they do this? And then all these stats came up about it. So super interesting, like how that part of it and then the grooming part, kind of weird. I'm glad you brought up the Mormon religion. We're out here in LA. You're not thinking about Mormonism. You go to Salt Lake one time and you are surrounded by it. It is everywhere. It is the people. It is the buildings. It is the infrastructure. It is the signage around town. It's everywhere. And Mike, I'm glad you brought that up. Did you see the team that drafted Kyle Filipowski? It was the Utah Jazz, right? The Utah Jazz. Yeah, it's a perfect the, fit. The only place for the, these two to continue in a uh, situation yeah, we safely cult, is under so. under the watchful eye of the church in Salt Lake City. Man, we've covered some scandals on this episode, yeah. but this one is juicy too. There's a lot going on. Now. Yeah, just crazy stuff. I mean, it's just, it's weird and we'll see what happens. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's any legal action or anything. It's just like he's no longer there communicating. Be. There should be. Nope. I know, no longer communicating with his family. Draft him either. I, I would also red flag him and not draft him. So I understand why 29 other teams let him go to Mormonville in Salt Lake City. Uh, I got a, I got one more Scandal City. Uh, it was just about the Sunday ticket. All the things came out last oh, week yeah. about Sunday ticket. Not, I don't know if it's a big scandal, but like it seems like people are going to get paid. I found that website. I sent it to our, our huge listener, Big Lou. And uh, I told him to go get money because you can file a class action lawsuit and get your money back. Lou... I'm pretty sure has been a direct TV customer unwillingly for 15 years watching the NFL. And our mutual friend has been using that login for 15 years to watch these games. He should be getting some money back, but I hope whatever comes out of this, like I think they're going to try to fight it and all these things, but the NFL could be liable for $14 billion, which could be going back to everybody that had direct TV and maybe a change in how we are able to view our teams, because we are here in LA, we have a lot of sports teams here in LA. A lot of times they're blacked out. You went to a Dodger game, blacked out. Now these are sports rights, locals rights, all these things. It needs to change because it's really hard to watch anything if you're a local fan. It's easier if you're like out of state. If you're a Florida fan, you can watch every every game you want because it doesn't matter unless they're playing. And every every the league is guilty of blackouts in some way, shape, or form, and and they're also outdated. Like the first one to to get rid of them and and take a stand and help the consumers, hopefully the others follow, but right now none of them are. I just think it's wild, Mike, that people have been paying direct TV for all these years. Like you said, Big Lou and others, they didn't they didn't want it. They no. didn't want to pay direct TV. No one wants a satellite dish bolted to your roof. No. What year is this that people are still doing this recently? Thank God for it's YouTube crazy. TV to come in. But you're right. I thought it was $4 billion. $14 billion or four? It says um, either one, uh, the NFL could be liable up to $14 billion. That would be a lot to pay out. And so uh, people are getting paid if they have to pay all this out. Of course, lawyer fees will come out. Maybe the judge drops it, whatever it is. My question, though, is, of course, people who, had, who paid their DirecTV bills all yep. this money for so long, they deserve the money first. What yeah. about there's, – there's some clause in it that I understand was, was talked about during the trial where – People like me, a Dolphins fan living in L.A., I just want my team. I just want one team. And the NFL purposefully, this came out during the trial that got my attention. The NFL purposely never allowed the one team as part of Sunday Ticket because Mm. they wouldn't be allowed to charge as much. And so that might be some kind of monopoly situation also. So how can I, who never paid DirecTV because they never offered the one team, but I always wanted to, but I was also not allowed to watch my one team because it wasn't an offer. How can I recoup some money out of this? Listen, I don't know. I sent you that link. I just sign up and you're just saying, you know, those like things you get, like iPhones are blowing up, sign this. Sign this lawsuit and get yeah. like a hundred dollars back. It's like you never get it. Or, you get thirteen cents. Yeah, we have to ask our lawyer. We should have our lawyer friend on, and he should explain this to us because we need to know how we can recoup some of our money. Here. He should so, actually explain every story in our rundown today. There's been a lot of places for a lawyer yeah, to comment. on. A lot of legal one. action here. But I, I guess the question is: Okay, let's say in 2026 they're like, okay, Jeremy, you are now allowed to have Miami Dolphins just stream them all year long individually. How much are you paying for the whole NFL season? 18, 17 games. How much you pay? Five bucks a game. So five times 17. Five bucks a game. That's it. I mean, that's it. That's That's hundreds of dollars. I think it has to be like a upper bowl ticket 
price per game, something like $30 a game or something. Like you're going to the movies and you're able to access just this one game. That's what I feel like it has to be a higher price because if they're going to charge me $300. Like the feed exists. The feed exists. They're not doing any extra work on the sure. setup of it. it. It's already happening somewhere. They're just getting me as a new, as a new um, customer. So right yeah. now I'm not paying. I refuse to pay however much YouTube TV currently charges. So I am a net new customer. My $85 based on $5 and on each game for 17 yeah. games is new revenue for them that they should be willing to take advantage of. You think so? you think they would be. I would rather like do a bundle where I can just buy every stream of all the games and have them individually whenever I want for a higher price just to have every single game if you want to tune into every single game. Because sometimes... You just want to watch one game. You're like, oh, that's blacked out. You can't watch it on CBS because it's a local mm -hmm. game. You only can see it on Red Zone, and they only cut in every once Thankfully, in a while. Thankfully, we get bored watching single isolated games. So we have Red Zone. We have Scott Hansen get us through the day. Maybe watch primetime. Maybe not. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I think the uh, – well, I don't know if anything's actually going to happen, but they'll probably just pay somebody out, and that's it. I mean, this probably save DirecTV, if anything, and be like – I don't know. The NFL is going to pay some billions, whether it's four or 14. Yeah. Uh, they're paying with a B, billions, and that's a big deal. I think it's like a couple hundred million from each team, right? I don't know. I don't know how it works. We got to get their lawyer on. Pepper should pay the most. He's an asshole owner. Yeah, that team is going to be so bad this year. Oh, yeah. Well, no later one's buying this... them on, on ticket. He should pay the most. Later this month, we're definitely going to do a uh, over-unders show. We're also going to do some gambling, a little gambling preview. Been doing a lot of research. I have been implementing so much. AI into my research this year. It is oh. absolutely amazing. To the to the right of my screen over here, I just had the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet, whatever it's called. Build me a truly custom model to predict NFL scores in the game. Like just built me a model in two seconds. I said, I need a model like this. What data do you need for me? How do we and know how accurate it will be? Well, we're going to test it. We're going to test it all out. I'm trying to do, there's just like all these tools now are just so powerful. It's like, why, why even just like go on fantasy.com and do all the research, crunch all the numbers here on your own custom data board and figure it out. So it's, it's kind of crazy. There's so much stuff going on. So hopefully this year there's a lot of winning if we can implement this AI. I, I hope there's a lot of winning and a lot of revenue coming in. Mike, you've touched on something that I understand is a big deal in AI circles right now is soon the humans and AI will mold together. So I won't know if I'm talking to Michael or if I'm talking sure. to Michael with all of his AI thoughts powering his words and thoughts. Um, so that's coming soon, maybe next week even. I don't know. Well, there, there was a podcast today that came out early this morning of brand new news, and I wanted to see what people thought. If you're listening this far, you probably already listened to that episode. The AI voice, that script that it wrote, was so it, it sounds so real to me that I can't even believe it's fake. Like, it's today's it's, sports update, right? Yeah, today's sports update. Quick, like three minute podcast. Okay. We'll see. I, I'm trying to automate it right now. It's not automated, but it is pretty pretty crazy. Well, it's people insane. need to give us feedback. Maybe they love the voice yeah. more than us, and we'll stop podcasting and let the voice do it. Or maybe they don't like the voice, and we need to change it. Well, I can, or maybe I the story voice. selection should be a little bit geared one way or another. Any mm. feedback, really, the Hangover Hotline is open for all of that. Yeah, I don't know. We got to find a new hotline somewhere because uh, our phone number got disconnected. So no uh, one Just comment us. on the TikTok and Instagram yes. reels. We'll see them for sure. We comment all comment over there. All right, Jeremy, good show. Uh, we'll be back next week, and uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what's going on. And also check out the sportsangover.com. A lot of new stuff up there. Swag, 4th of July swag, plus the uh, Represent America in the uh, the Olympics this summer, whenever the Olympics start. When the Olympics it's start? Coming. July 24th. July 24th. Soon. All right. Good show. See you.